I want to share with you this tutorial on how to create a cute plant bookmark with watercolor and pencils. This tutorial is beginner friendly, great for kids or anyone who has limited time to paint but wants to do something creative. It's a cheerful way to mark your place in a book, journal, or planner. Hi, I'm Lisa Griffin from the Pigeon Letters Design Team, an illustrator who loves adding color, joy, and positivity to the world one illustration at a time. To create a bookmark, you need minimal supplies, and those include watercolor paints, a few pencils, watercolor paper, I recommend at least 140 pound, and some brushes. I'll be using the Pigeon Letters round number two and six, as well as the Filbert brush. I won't be recommending a brand of watercolor paint because I want you to feel comfortable to use what you have on hand, but you will see me using a hot press watercolor paper and I will explain why. I trim my bookmarks to approximately two and a half by eight inches. This is actually really easy if you have an eight by 10 pad of watercolor paper because you can just trim it down in quarters. And then I make some rough sketches to decide how I'd like the bookmark to lay out. You can start by making a square on your page and then fill that square in with the shape of your little pot planter. I find this is an easy way to make it symmetrical and balanced. Once you've sketched out a shape for your pot, there are really so many possibilities you can do with patterns and shapes and design of the pot itself. Just keep in mind that we're going to be putting a little face somewhere on that, so you want to leave space for that expression. Once my idea is down for that pot, I then sketch out my bookmark, and I keep in mind the type of plant I'm going to have growing from my pot and how it will fit on the bookmark itself. So a hanging plant versus maybe a tall leafy plant. With your rough sketch done and your watercolor paper trimmed, you can now lightly sketch your plant right out onto the paper. This is one of the benefits of drawing or working with hot press paper. It's a smooth surface, so it's very easy to draw on versus cold press, which has a bit of a textured surface to it. So here I'm adding the planter and the little feet. Those were one of the details I wanted to add for some personality on my pot. And then I've lightly drawn in some lines so I'll know where my foliage is going to go for the plant. The foliage, those little leaf shapes, I just make, it's almost like a squished oval or an eye or an almond shape. And I just fill in the area lightly here pretty intuitive process drawing in the leaves and lastly I put in a little heart on my design it's just something I like to do if you leave room at the bottom you can also add a small handwritten sentiment or a pun or you could even personalize your bookmark if you wanted to give it to someone special and now for the fun part adding color so using your preferred watercolor paint I'm here mixing up a green. I wanted a nice springy green for my plant. Using a Pigeon Letters number two round, I'm going to now carefully from top to bottom add the stems of the foliage. The point on this brush is so nice. It's very easy to make a lovely organic line with the paint. And as you'll probably see, I don't tape my layouts down. I like to really work and move around the page. Certainly, if you're more comfortable taping your paper down, by all means, go ahead and do that. I want this to be a very playful, creative process. As I go in and paint the leaves, you might notice I don't dip my brush in pigment overly much. What I like to do is try to paint several in at a time. And doing it this way allows the pigment to become diluted and run out, in essence, on your brush. And then it gives this wonderful variation of color to the leaves. If you look at the top, you can actually witness that and see the deeper, richer green. And then as I'm working down the stem, the leaves are becoming lighter. And what's happening is the 
white of the page is able to shine through more where there's less pigment. I think if you can become lost in the process, it almost becomes meditative as you're painting and you just, I don't know, it's just very relaxing. So I hope you're finding that as you're working through your own bookmark that you can just become lost in the process and enjoy being in the moment. As the paint begins to dry, I can get a sense of how it's going to lay on the page. And if a leaf is too light, I just go back in and dab a little bit of color. And what's nice is because it's still wet, you're seeing the new pigment interact with the layer beneath it, which also can add some beautiful texture to the leaves. Working in watercolor is sometimes a test of patience because you do need to allow time for the paints to dry on the paper and be absorbed and soak in so you can really appreciate the different textures and effects you can achieve. I like adding a little heart to each bookmark so here I'm mixing up or actually reactivating on my palette because I do like to reuse colors. Um, this lovely, it's kind of like a raspberry red, but you could always use a cadmium red for your heart. Now I'm going to let this dry a bit and move on to the pot base. And for this, I'm going to use a filbert brush. I have the Pigeon Letters filbert right here. For this wet on wet technique, I find a filbert with its nice flat edge makes it very easy to fill or to cleanly fill, fill in the areas of the base. And I don't soak the paper. As you can see right here, it's just to dampen it to allow the pigment I put down to flow a little more naturally. And I've decided to use a terracotta color here and I'm gonna give you a peek at my palette because one trick that I do is I will mix some of my colors together. I find this gives a nice cohesiveness to the painting and it also adds a nice warmth because I've pulled that raspberry red just a bit into the terracotta color. Carefully painting in, following the line right where the paper's wet going back for a little more color and just filling in this space it's kind of meditative um i really love getting in that zone where i don't have to think overly much as i'm painting with watercolor i just enjoy the process and i hope that that's what you can do with this too and then I've gone back, I've dipped in more pigment because I want to give a weight to the base of the plant. Filling in the, the little feet there. And I'm dipping again just to load up that round brush with a little more pigment because as this dries, I really want that weight. I've added more of that raspberry red to the terracotta pigment and I'm going to use that to add just a, a line at the top, you know, like a stripe that would be at the top of the pot, just to add a little bit of design to the container. And again, you can see how the paint's drying and I just love watching what watercolor can, can do. You actually, you need to give it a little life and know that it's going to dry and do things on its own. And for the details, you can see the point of this round brush makes it really easy to get in and do some, you know, lovely sharp lines there. And moving the, the paper around, again, I don't like <laughs> to tape down my watercolor. I, I really get involved in the layout and like to move it around and adjust it to get into those tiny areas. Once the container is painted the way you like it, you need to give it time to dry. That's one thing with watercolor, you really <laughs> need to be patient with it. So I'm gonna set this one aside and pull up another example. This one is fully dry. So now we can go in and add some more details and personality. You can use a micron pen, 
something that's waterproof with archival inks, or you can use watercolor pencils. What I love about watercolor pencils, if you have not used them before, is you can use them dry or you can use them wet. The nice point of the pencil allows you to get in there and add any details that you want over the watercolor paint. It adds a lovely layered effect as well as texture. It also allows you to go in and add a richness to the pigment or a different color. So here I'm adding like some line work to the leaves. But now I'm grabbing a yellow pencil just to add a pop of color. I lightly go in and erase some of the underlying pencil marks. Not all of them. I think it gives you a peek into seeing a bit of the process of the artist behind the artwork. And back to pencil, you can see right here that foot when it dried, there was kind of a funny edge there. So I'm just filling it in with a Prismacolor pencil and then just going back in and making sure that all those details are to my liking. And yeah, hey, side note, <laughs> make sure if you use a pen that there's plenty of ink in it to write well. This one was dying, <laughs> so you can see it's not giving me a nice edge, but I figured I'd go with it to show you guys as an example. And now the cute factor. This is when you can add in the face that you want to your container and it really does lend personality to your bookmark. This was a pink Prismacolor pencil that I was using to do some rosy cheeks. And now I'm going in with a watercolor pencil and adding a cute little upturned smile. Two little round dots for eyes and voila you now see life behind your plant container and if you want to add water I just did that to the cheeks and once that dries it blends a little bit better into the container itself So here's the one we were working on, and you can see how it's dried. So we're gonna play again and add another fun little face. You can add so much variety with this. It can be a grumpy face, it could be a sleepy one, a winky face. Here I'm going to make an open mouth smile and some little grinning eyes. I'm just using a black watercolor pencil for these details and filling it in. And here are the examples that we worked on and you can see they still need a little time to dry. So let them lie flat and dry completely before you decide to add any ribbon or baker's twine. And that's it, you're done. These are such a fun way to spend some time on a sunny afternoon or to experiment with watercolors. And when you're done, you have an adorable bookmark to enjoy or to give to a friend. For even more in-depth watercolor techniques, be sure to get a copy of Peggy Dean's Guide to Nature Drawing and Watercolor. It is a wonderful resource to add to your shelf. Thank you so much for creating with me today. I hope you had fun playing in watercolor and pencils.